Welcome, my name is Dwight Skull from Skull RPG, and this channel is dedicated to making better dungeon masters. So let's jump right into the story ideas for running an Oni or an Ogre Mage in your Dungeons & Dragons 5e campaign. Stay tuned until the end where I'll tell you actually how you can weave all these different stories together into a little mini campaign that can be spread out over many different game sessions. Story number one. The cave to the southeast has a dark history. The townsfolk tell of a mighty wizard that used to dwell there hundreds of years ago. Some found the riches there, and others have found only the cold hand of death itself. Children will often dare each other to go in there, despite the warnings from the elders in town. When your players arrive, the town is in an absolute panic. Eight children were last seen heading to the entrance of the cave. The town promises you gold if you can bring them home, even more if you somehow manage to bring them home alive and well. The clock is ticking. A halfling approaches the party when they're just outside the town and says that his child is one of those missing and he knows the area very well, and he would be happy to guide the players to the cave. He even knows the first level pretty well as he and his brother used to explore the cave years ago before it became too dangerous to do so. This halfling is actually an oni. He will guide the players to a secret door that has stairs leading down. On the second level is a trap for the players. As the players walk down a dark hallway, there will be a secret illusionary door the halfling will disappear into. A perception of 15 plus will see that he walked into a wall that appeared to be solid. Then they will hear a portcullis drop 30 feet behind them, trapping them in this hallway. And at this point, the Oni will cast darkness into the hallway. A mage will enter in at the far end of the hallway and begin to cast area damage spells into the darkness. The mage and the oni work with one another so well that this is a practiced and well-planned trap. Once the players manage to kill the mage, the oni will disappear and flee further into the dungeon. Were the children a ruse? Were they already found? Did they never even enter this cave at all and the oni in the halfling form persuaded the town folk into this frenzy when he saw the players coming? Did the oni kidnap the children and they are bound at the deepest levels of the dungeon itself? Personally, I would either have the children be a ruse, or that they're all bound at the deepest levels of the dungeon. If you need help creating a random dungeon, use Don John's Random Dungeon Generator link in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, please hit the like button to help find those missing children. Thank you. Now our next story has your players entering into an abandoned mansion that is reportedly haunted. You've been lured here because of the rumors that there is a powerful artifact guarded by the undead located somewhere in the basement levels of this once great home. For every monster encounter they have in this place, one of the players is always struck by an invisible giant wielding a large sized glaive. It will move in on what it thinks is the weakest party member and then suddenly becomes visible for an attack. On its next turn, it will either turn invisible again or cast darkness, leaving the players to fight what's in the room afterward. It will continue to harry the party, taking on different looking giant forms each time, making the players think that there may be up to 15 different giants that can become invisible. It will not show its true form, but after a third such attack, a Knowledge Arcana 15 will let them know that they are fighting an Oni and that it can shapeshift from a small to medium-sized humanoid and into a large-sized giant. But its true form looks more like a large-sized humanoid with devilish facial features. It can cast invisibility and darkness at will, as well as other spell-like abilities. If you're feeling particularly evil, this Oni can even attack during short and long rests, interrupting the player's ability to fully recover. At the bottom of the mansion is a giant theater that is in ruins. On the stage is a throne where the Oni likes to sit. He will not be visible, but when they enter, he is around and will harry the party in this room using all of its tricks. If you wish, the Oni could fight to the death, but I would use this opportunity for the Oni to escape once again to come back in random encounters and even in towns. The Oni could now have a personal vendetta against the players, and it can blend in with any of the townsfolk they encounter. The Oni could harass the players for months to come until they devise a way of either killing it or bribing it to leave. You could also have items located under the throne that could include a letter instructing the Oni to look for the players by description and to do its best to kill them and then sign it with a single initial to introduce your main villain into your campaign. Personally, I like the concept of having a reoccurring villain that could show up once a month in a new form. Now, the final idea would be to have an Oni pose as a wealthy merchant and ask players for help finding a magical item for him. They will be paid handsomely for it. Make the item something that could be seen as important to an NPC, not because of the magic, but because of family history. An Oni would absolutely love to have a wand of magic missile and a cloak of displacement, for example. So the owner recruits the players at a tavern to go into an abandoned fortress that his great-grandfather used to run for the Empire and obtain his wand and cloak for him. He will pay the party 10,000 gold pieces and they can keep whatever treasure they find in the process. The player gets a rudimentary map of the area and the location of the forest. He also hands them a wax seal ring with the initials R.B. on it, which is his grandfather's name, Randally Broken Arrow. The items will be behind a door with those initials marked on it. 
Now, in reality, the Oni will turn invisible and beat the party there. Once inside the fortress, the Oni will let the players destroy the obstacles and monsters within that he himself could not get past. And near the end of the fortress, when they're almost near the door, the Oni will surprise the players with magical darkness, and then while the players are waiting to be attacked, the Oni will go to the room and steal the items for himself. You see, the Oni murdered the real great-grandson of Randally Broken Arrow after hearing him tell his story while drunk at a different tavern. He then stalked and murdered the great-grandson, Barrow Broken Arrow, in his own home and stole the map and ring and several thousand gold pieces. The Oni will escape to punish the players again later, and a perception of 15 plus will see the letters R, B, embroidered on the Cloak of Displacement, and a perception of 20 will see it actually on the Wand of Magic Missile while in combat. Now, if they manage to kill the Oni, it will be obvious to them, and an intelligence of 10 plus will remind the players of this quest. Personally, I would like to wrap all three of these tales together. I would start with story number two, and to introduce the villain in your campaign, or maybe just uh, the villain of a smaller story arc. Then I would weave in story number three to buff the Oni, and finally conclude with story number one. The mage could be this villain, but because of the help from the players, the Oni may now be the true villain. I hope this was helpful in seeing how three one-off stories could actually be weaved together into a larger mini campaign. To add more time, weave in other adventures that have absolutely nothing to do with the Oni. Then when you think the players have maybe forgotten about him, bring him back. You could run these stories at levels 7, and then 9, and then 11, which would give your players time to forget about the Oni in general, only to have him come back again and again. If this was helpful to you, please like this video as it helps the content spread to more people. Thanks for watching.